So a few people have questions, and I mean genuine questions, not talking about yourself for a minute and a half. Please come up here, and we'll, we'll get to take a few of those. I, of course, have my questions of my own. Alex, I'd like to start. You seem like a human being who is very much at peace with his own mortality, like you chose to do, do this for your own reasons and chose to allow the filmmakers to do this for their own reasons. What would you have wanted for the film if this went south? Oh yeah, it's funny. I never, I never really thought about it. I basically had, I did not care. If I, if I had fallen to my death, they could do whatever they want with footage. Um, obviously it wouldn't affect me, so whatever. <laughs> yeah, I, I honestly never thought about it. And it's funny, people have asked that in Q&As when I've been with the directors, with, with China and Jimmy, and uh, they talk, you know, very soberly about this plan they had and how they respect my legacy and, and whatever, and I'm like, who cares? I'd be dead. <laughs> That's, yeah. Um, so, uh, I have a question for Mikey, the director of, of cinematography. You're the, you actually seem to suffer during the climb more than Alex did. What would you have wanted to happen with this footage? This is your career. You put so much effort into this as well. You're also, you're also. This is a human being in your life. You, what would imagine if you're left with this footage? What would you and the directors want? Yeah, yeah it's, it's a hard question and something I, I thought about a bit. Um, we didn't talk about it beforehand. At least I was not part of that conversation. Um, and honestly, uh, the film would not have been very important to me. I mean, Alex is way more important than any film that we have ever made, and uh, I honestly, I was more concerned about the rest of my life and what, you know, the damage it would have done to me, and screw the film, I guess, you know, it wasn't that important to me, career-wise or anything, I mean, I think I would have been out of the business anyways. It was the last thing I ever did, so. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, that's sort of the interesting tension of the whole art of the film is that, I mean, just, yeah, that, that tension between me wanting to do something that's, that's sort of intensely personal in some ways, but then it being filmed and the toll that that, that takes on, on the film crew. And, uh, yeah, I mean, we all sort of had to balance, balance that the best we could. Okay. Do, do we have an audience member who has a real question who wants to come up? When you're right here standing here, then I'll know you're serious. In the meantime, <laughs> okay, okay, first up, come on up, please. Well, I wanted to say thank you for making such an honest movie. Um, it might have been kind of hurtful for some of the people who have seen it, but it's still very honest, and we appreciate that as viewers. The question is, Alex, what is your greatest strength as a climber, and what, if any, is your weakness? Well, that's an interesting question. Um, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, honestly, just like, I don't really know what my strength is. Obviously, the mental side of it, you know, the result of things, I guess, comes as a bit of a strength. But, um, but weaknesses, I mean, I can list tons of weaknesses. My fingers, uh, one of my friends said my fingers are embarrassingly weak for a professional climber. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is true. Yeah, well, that's, I know. Like, I think Mikey's fingers are actually stronger than mine. And, and uh, you yeah. know. But that's from holding that camera up, I think. Yeah. So, <laughs> so on that, Alex, I, I have another question of my own. At, Performing at the highest level in any sport or any human activity, you need to prepare your body, you need to strengthen yourself physically, but it's also a lot of mental, psychological gain. Obviously, the physical part is visible in the film, some of your exercises, your, your dietary habits are kind of well known. Can you talk to us, for anyone here who wants to improve themselves, what do you do for your emotional, psychological, personal, internal strength to prepare? Yes, that's the right question. So, I, I don't know, so I don't actually specifically do anything for the emotional side of it, I don't think. I mean, so a lot of it comes from, from visualization, sort of imagining and you know, visioning, I don't know, just putting yourself in a position. And you definitely see that in the film a little bit when I'm talking through sequences. Um, you know, left hand, right hand, you know, foot, those kinds of things. I mean, writing that down and then, and then sort of imagining it over and over was an easy way for me to, to mentally process what it would feel like to be in that position. Um, but I don't know, I mean, I don't know how others would necessarily train themselves in that way. I mean, visualizing the climb is one thing, but in a more general sense, like how do you emotionally prepare to, to free solo? Like, I don't know, I mean, you practice, you just, you do more and more free solos, you, you put yourself in, basically, you, you gradually expand your comfort zone, you do things that are slightly harder over and over until eventually you're doing things that you didn't think you could before, I guess. Okay, thank you. Next question. Come on up. Hey, this is a goofy question, but were you tempted to just lie back the off with? Um, the pictures of me lie backing it 
are amazing. No, 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 for me, points? actually, in general, I did lieback almost anything on the roofs because lieback, and for those that don't know, lieback is like the counter pressure between your hands and your feet, and you're sort of like matching on a coconut tree or something. But uh, in general, I try not to solo that way because if one foot slips, then, then you fall off. And so it's nicer to find the most secure way possible. And so in general, I sort of worked the entire route. I actually pioneered some like different ways to climb certain parts so I wouldn't have to lie back so that it wouldn't all be contingent upon one foot slipping. But were you tempted? Was I tempted to lie back? No, because I don't want to die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because the lie back is a little faster, a little more efficient, but that basically is the question of fitness. And I'm like, I'd rather be more fit and not risk my life on one foot. You know, because like fitness is something you can train, so it's like it's better just to train more and be stronger and then not have to risk, you know, blowing a foot. So I have a question. I was really inspired by the Honda Foundation and what you're doing to better the world. Did you get a, a great life insurance policy with them as a beneficiary or what? I, I did not, no. But, uh, I don't think you qualify. Yeah. <laughs> For the people here who share your vision of, of what you're doing, bringing electricity to a lot of people who don't have it in the world, making it a more sustainable world, how can people contribute something of their own? Yeah, so the Hong Foundation, uh, we've been supporting solar projects for, for a more equitable world, just uh, supporting solar all over. Um, I mean, if you're interested, you can check out hongfoundation.org. Um, but yeah, I mean, we've just been supporting other nonprofits. I mean, it stemmed from, from a desire to do something positive for the environment. And then sort of the realization there's no point in supporting environmental nonprofits that didn't also improve standard of living, like they help the people in those communities. And so that sort of led me to solar projects, things that both help, you know, help the world and then also help the people who live there. And so um And actually, if we're talking about, yeah, if we're talking about the foundation, uh, almost every Q&A I've been, people ask, what's next, what's next? And I'm like, actually, so I've been spending quite a bit more time working with the foundation. Um, you know, and then climbing in the gym, climbing my girlfriend, like doing casual, normal things. But so don't ask me what's next because that's what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> what do you hope people take away from the film? I mean, it's an emotional journey that you brought us along with. And so. Actually, I want to hear what Mikey thinks about that because uh, so I've been doing Q and A's all over the country, and mostly with the with the directors, with Chai and Jimmy. And, uh, and yeah, I'm curious what you think about it because the thing is, I went into the film with no particular vision. Like I, you know, I had nothing to do with the making of the film. All I wanted to do was free solo cap, and then I just sort of let them craft their art. And so I'm curious what what you guys thought. What, you know, what was the vision throughout? Well, I, mean, I mean, I know I know it wasn't technically your your department, but I'm sure you guys all talked about. It. I mean, for me, I guess like what sticks out, you know, like filming with Alice, you know, all these years was just that like he's so like dedicated to do what he really wants to do in his life. You know, like this is it, and he doesn't make any compromises, which sometimes is an issue. Um, but for the most part, he's like, this is what I'm going to do, and I'm going to stick with it and keep going. And I, it's like changed my life being with him this much, you know? Like, he's like motivated me to like do the things that I really want to do and like not let as many things get, get in the way. And I mean, hopefully people see that in the film, that it's like, it, it takes that much dedication too. I mean, he quit eating cookies. <laughs> and then I quit eating cookies, but he gave up. I'm still not eating cookies. <laughs> still most of eating cookies. But and then, but then, and then Mikey sends for a five fourteen after he quit eating cookies. So I mean, that's <laughs> Mikey, I have another question for you. Alice is not the only one grappling with things in this film. You had a really difficult decision whether even to participate yourself. How did you make that decision? And did you, it seems like you also had some moments questioning that even as the film cameras were on. Yeah, it was a super hard decision. You know, Jimmy called me uh, years ago when this project kind of started to come to fruition. And, you know, we talked about, it's like, do we even want to do this? Like, do we want to be involved? And, and honestly, that was before I actually mentioned Soul, you know, Cap. It was just like, hey, we're thinking about doing a film with Alex. Do you want to be involved? Should we even do this? And it was like, oh, I don't know. And we, we sat on it for a while. And then it was like, OK. And you know, and then I actually talked to Alex at some point, And uh, this is something he said to me before. He was just like, hey, like, we're going to make a film. Somebody's going to make a film. And like, I want you guys to, to do it. And I don't want anybody else to do it. I trust you guys. Like, Would you want me up there with somebody that I don't trust? And if something happened, you know, how would you feel then? So he pretty much had peer pressure. <laughs> <laughs> I don't recall that. 
I'm sure you don't. You know? Yeah, no, no, you know, we've had that conversation. You're like, come on, somebody's going to do it. I actually want you to do it. Yeah, that no, makes sense, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we got another question here. Alex, uh, do you remember seeing the person in the bunny suit or the unicorn? No, no, no so, well, so I mean, I, I walked past them, I said good morning, and they were still sitting in their bed. Um, they were on their board of the ice cream bag. So it wasn't until I actually saw the film that I was like, oh, it's a unicorn and a horn. <laughs> 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 No, I, and the thing is, it was low enough on the route that I was trying to stay focused and not not talk to anybody. I was trying to, you know, I didn't want to be distracted. So I was just like, good morning, walk by. And then later, you're just like, huh. <laughs> <laughs> you have another question? Yep, here we go. How often do you pre solo without knowing anything about it? Not afraid, have you never done it before? Yes, and how often do I on that solo? Um, I mean, a, a fair amount over the years. I mean, it depends. If I'm in a new area where there's just tons of roots that I want to climb, I mean, it's just, it, it depends. But I have done a lot of soloing without preparation in my life. But I obviously do it at a much lower level. You know, things that are sort of appropriate, and things that I feel like I can down climb. And there have been a lot of roots that I've started up and then just climbed back down the bottom and called it good and got home. Um, so, I mean, yeah, it's always sort of an adventurous experience. But it's certainly for something as difficult as El Cap, it just, at least for me, it required this degree of preparation. I have, I have another question for you. Obviously, you're doing this for your own reasons, but it, whether you want to be or not, in some way, you're a role model for a lot of people around the world uh, that can be positive in the sense of people pushing their limits and, and trying to achieve what was previously thought impossible. It could also be seen by someone. There, you know, there's no rule that says someone who's mentally unstable can't watch this film. Uh, what? How do you think about that? If someone saw this, if you an example, and it didn't go so well for them. That's funny to say somebody mentally unstable might watch the film. I think most people watch the film and they're like, those guys are mentally unstable. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of all perspective. But, um, but no, so I mean, a lot of people ask, you know, if, if I have some kind of responsibility for people that might, might be inspired by the film and go out and try to go free soloing. And, and in general, sort of like, I mean, the thing about free soloing is that it's just not that easy. I mean, it's not something that you can watch and just go do. Because you, you know, it's, it's I, I like to contrast gravity assistance sports with, with something like climbing, which is fighting against gravity. But so something like skiing, you can like watch a ski movie and be like, I'm gonna hug this big gap, here we go. And then you just point your skis down, and one way or another, you're gonna hug the gap. It's like, you know, maybe you'll stick it, maybe you won't, but it's happening regardless. But with climbing, you know, once you start to climb, you make a move or two, and then you have to choose to keep making each subsequent move. And so it takes a long time, it takes a lot of effort, like you have to be fully committed to it. And so if you watch the movie and you get all overstoked and you climb 15 feet off the ground, you're suddenly like, whoa, like <laughs> this is pretty scary. You know, and, and you still might be psyched enough to climb another 20 feet, but then at some point you're like, oh my goodness gracious, I'm climbing the cliff. Like this is, this is terrifying. And so I mean, it's just not something that someone who's not psychologically prepared can, can do, like at all. So I don't know, I mean, I don't really stress it. Uh, that said, kids, stay in school. Thank you for a very genuine answer. We have another question here. So I was sitting up there when my palms were sweating. First of all, I just want to say thank you and congratulations on your dream becoming a reality. Thank you. Uh, and, and thank God you did it because it's terrifying. Uh, but mostly, I've been climbing for about nine years. I got to climb later in life. and. I feel like there's two mindsets. There's the, there's the climbers, yeah, yeah, there's the climbers that climb the route and they're done with it. Uh, you know, check mark, done. When you climb the climb, do you want to repeat it? Not necessarily this one, but those climbs in that it's like a joyous memory, you want to relive it? Um, I don't know, I mean. Do you, do you remember that, that interview right at the end we were doing with Mark? And you actually talked about doing it again? Well, that's because that afternoon I was so fine. Yeah, yeah, he actually was just like, I might, I might do it again. I might do it again. And I'm like, no, 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 don't do it again. Don't yeah, well, now that I've hosted a gym climbing for a few months, or actually for kind of a while, I'm like, oh, the idea of climbing is going to be tall seems so really scary. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, I mean, it's interesting because for me, it's not a matter of repeating the route, but typically once I solo a difficult route, I'm sort of like, okay, I can check that and never, never necessarily touch it again. I mean, I think that there's a certain, you know, you climb a route and then you might want to climb it again, you might want to try and climb it faster or better in some way, but typically if I pre-solve the route, I feel, I feel satisfied with it. Like, I've had all the experience that I need from that route, and I'm happy just to, you know, I mean, there's so much rock in the world, I may as well climb the ones. Okay, next question. 
First of all, thanks so much for the and especially the photography is amazing. Now a bit of an awkward questions. Um, <laughs> I know Jimmy and Chai can be here, but um, a lot of the film is about relationship. So I'm just wondering, Alex, um, there's two relationships in the film, and kind of like how Jimmy and Chai are working together, and it's also you and Simon. So wondering, do you learn anything from their relationship or how they work together? <laughs> <laughs> you go, you have a, a backup of way Well, any place I go, I just know what the best thing would be. I mean, so the thing with El Cap is that you can just post up and sit down anywhere, and worst case scenario, you sit for a day and a half and somebody comes and collects you. Because they're always going to find a group. And so, I mean, if it's a matter of life, and then, you know, you might not want to like, sit on some ledge for a day, you know, you're like, oh, it's cold at night, but it's a lot better than dying, you know? <laughs> so, I mean, that's, that's what it comes to. You just, you just post up and don't move. It's like, somebody, somebody will get you eventually. Thank you. I think we have time. No, no more questions. Put it together for Alex and Mike. 